let's say you have a particular monetary goal that you have to develop in your business. Otherwise, you have to go get a job. That's actually true for all of us, right? Like all of us need a particular uh, amount of money coming in to our business every month in order for us to focus more on the business. Otherwise, obviously we have to get a different income source. For most of us, that's getting a job. So my, the question to me was, well, George, is it productive, hopefully joyfully productive for me to set a goal of say, I, I need to make $5,000 in the next six months um, to focus on that, or should I just focus on getting a job? Because I don't think I could do both. I'm a you know a busy parent, or I have a caretaker. I have other things I'm doing. So um, here's it, it's it is a yeah it's a, it's a it's a great question, and, and like I said, it applies to all of us at some level. And you know my my recommendation is is always to have some time carved out to build your business, even if you have two full-time jobs and you're caretaking for kids and the elderly, I hope you'll at least carve out you know, one hour a week, you know, it's private time to, to build your business. Ideally you would carve out 10 hours a week to build your business every, every week. That's actually, I want to say a good minimum. If at all possible, you have a full-time job, you're caretaking. You probably, even in that situation, I've, clients I've worked with have still, many of them have still been able to carve out 10 hours a week focused business development time so if you can't do 10 hours obviously do as much as you can so um so essentially this is a question of time management and joyful productivity part of your time if you have six months or three months you really uh is very stressful and i i, I to, to 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 require of your business to generate five thousand consistently after three months, six months, nine months, a year, whatever the timeline is, the only time where I say that's okay is if you already did it before for this business and you just have to like reconnect with your past clients to get them to sign up again or um, you already have a bunch of people waiting in the wings to sign up with you. Like that's the only time where I go, okay, this is a matter of enrolling people who are already interested. But if you're saying, George, I maybe have a bit of an audience, um, but I there's I I have to do a, quite a bit to get them interested in my services, enroll them. I'd say it might happen in three months. It might even happen in a month. But if I were your <laughs> spouse or your business manager, I would say I I don't think it's realistic, or it's I don't think it's reasonable to give yourself that kind of pressure, and and not kind to give your business that kind of pressure and your audience that kind of pressure. You hear me? Because essentially you're saying, audience, I have a need to make 5,000 a month and please sign up. And you're gonna do all kinds of shenanigans to get people to sign up. And it's gonna be shenanigans. It's gonna be feeling pressury or scarcity because you feel that pressure naturally so. So what I mean by time management in this case would be you're, if I were in your shoes, I would carve out a few hours a week to be working on what does joyful employment for somebody else mean for me and to be seeking that out. Essentially, what you're doing is you're, you're looking for one big client or maybe two clients. So Because nowadays, employment is oftentimes freelance work and it's oftentimes not a con you know, like a 40-hour week job. So think about it as kind of you're having these two uh, times you've carved out every week, one part of it is to get one or two or three big clients doing whatever those clients need you to do that you have some skill for. It might not be directly related to, let's say, for example, let's say you are a coach to fathers to how to be a better parent, uh, a, a father parenting coach. Okay, that's that's your I, authentic business. Wonderful, great. But maybe your 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 employment, your freelance employment is going to be doing, I don't know what it is. You're, you're maybe doing some project management or you're doing something else for, for others. Um, so you've got to carve out both times. Some time to, to, to create that one, two or three big clients that'll pay the $5,000 a month, no problem. And then some additional part of your time each week is carved out to continue doing the practices, the eight practices of authentic business which creates 
the replacement of the $5,000 a month within, I don't know how long it'll take. It'll be within a year, two years. Depends on how much time you spend each week working the eight practices or part of the eight practices. So I hope that this is hopefully encouraging in that, first of all, you have so many skills that someone else would love to pay you for. If only you would allow yourself to be available for those, right? That's the question. Are you going to make yourself available to work on those skills that aren't your authentic business, but you don't mind doing it? Okay, you don't mind doing it, especially for these people, right? There's so much opportunity, right? There are all kinds of people that you probably would genuinely want them to succeed. You want that their small business to succeed. You want their organizations to succeed. And you don't mind doing something that is not part of your authentic business. Great. That is your one, two, or three big clients paying all the bills. And then on the side, you're also your side hustle is developing this other thing that feels much more authentic to you, but you have to develop more of an a trusting audience and and do some market research, et cetera, to get those clients that eventually replace the other income. So I hope this is helpful and I look forward to seeing your comments below.